<laughs> What's good, YouTube? This Rage Real. So, today's video, I want to show you guys the only defense you'll need in current gen Madden 24. So, if you enjoyed this video, go and drop a like on the video right now. Go ahead and sub and turn on post notifications on. So, I hope you guys are having a blessed day. So, one thing I want to say is that this video is going to be extremely long, but all of it is going to be gameplay. So, I'm only going to spend about two minutes in practice mode at the most. Showing you guys how to set it up and then going over personnel and then we're going to hop straight into gameplay. Last thing I want to say before I go any further is that if you're interested in any ebooks, check out my website, allthingsmadden.com. The link is in the description. I am going to be uploading ebooks soon. Y'all stay patient with me. My life has been crazy. I've already talked about it a little bit, but I may talk about it more in gameplay. But for now, we're going to go ahead and hop into this video. So as far as personnel goes, um, you want to make sure for a fact you have your best two rushers on the outside and... Uh, you know, you just your best three rushes here, obviously. Now, your user right here needs to be your best player. Now, I'm using the Bucks, so in this case, Devin White is perfect because he has a nice speed. And then you want to make sure that you have Levante David if you're going to use the Bucks. Now, if you don't have good linebackers, you want to have nothing but safeties at those three spots. It's just that the Bucks have two great linebackers that need to be on the field. Now, lastly, uh, up top, you want to make sure you have some speed and somebody who can cover uh, pretty well. So I love this combo right here. And uh, that's pretty much all I want to talk about personnel right here in the slot. Make sure you have some speed. OK, now the only play you need to do is going to be this blitz uh, nickel blitz zero. So not the LB blitz zero, but the nickel blitz zero. Last thing I want to say is as far as uh, coaching adjustments, that's completely up to you, however you want to do them. I'm not going to talk about that right now. So we're going to go to Nickel Blitz Zero. Now, all I'm going to do is come out in just any set. So it really doesn't matter. I'm going to come out in this one. And I'm not even um, going to really run. I'm just going to kind of show you the setup. So all we're going to do, we're going to crash our line up. We're going to spread our linebackers. And then we're going to press. We're going to use this guy, quarterback contain. That normally is all you're gonna have time to do if you're playing a quick snapper. Now you're not gonna be expected to scream. Don't don't you know? Don't expect just to holler at them. Um, you'll see as the gameplay goes. I got four gameplays for you guys, so four different opponents straight. I just load up in four games, and you're gonna be able to see those. So that's why the video is so long. Now my favorite base coverage is this, and then we're gonna go right into the video. My favorite base coverage is I like to take my cornerbacks, put them in outside thirds, and then I like to take one of my safeties, whichever one I feel like doing, to be honest with you. I like to take him and then put him in a third. Uh, this is one of my favorite, favorite covers. Now, lastly, if I want to mix it up, I'll take whoever's guarding the running back and I'll throw him in a purple or I'll throw him in a mid read. I like either or, but normally I like to do a purple and then I'll shade down if I want hard flats or I'll shade up if I want clouds. And you want to hold L2. And then on the snap of the ball, we want to grab one of their attention. And then we want to just go and use her what we see, basically. So um, I'm going to talk about it more into gameplay. So let's go in and hop straight into that gameplay. All right, y'all. So we got the gameplay here. And I did have to change shirts because my shirt was a little irritating on me. But anyways, um, I wanted to talk to you guys more in depth about this defense so you guys can understand when you're running it what to look for. Now, this defense is incredible at stopping the run. This is why you run this defense, okay? So again... We run this defense because we want to stop the run, all right? Now, kind of why this video is going on, I just want y'all to pay attention to the adjustments I'm making. I want y'all to pay attention to how long it takes me to adjust. And I want you to pay attention to the blitz. I'm asking you to pay attention to all three of those things. And also, lastly, that I just thought about, pay attention to the run when they run the ball, which I know you have no choice to. But I'll need you guys to understand something about this blitz. So this is not a blitz that every single time they pass the ball, you're gonna get somebody screaming free. That's not how this works, okay? Um, but I put this gameplay together to show you that no matter what, you're gonna be able to have solid defense even if you're not screaming at the quarterback immediately. Um, the way this defense works, the quarterback contains are the biggest part of this defense, okay? So again, if you remember any adjustment, make sure you quarterback contain. And again, the adjustment is crash your line up, spread your linebackers, press, and quarterback attain. You do those things, you're going to be great, okay? Now, you can technically run this defense with just man coverage. If you want to just play man coverage, I don't. I love playing zone. Now, every now and again, um, I, I don't mind just staying strictly man to show them that, okay? Um, I, I play man across the board every now and again. But for the most part, I love mixing in those zone coverages because those zone coverages, 
they're going to do a great job because when your opponent sees your play art when you're done with the play they're going to see that you're running this man blitz so they're going to assume that you're running man coverage right there is a staple of why it is important to make sure that you are able to stuff the run with your user. So I know I didn't talk about it much, but the way run fits work on this game for a current gen, you could be a little bit more patient with your linebacker versus um versus next gen. Next gen, you have to hit it pretty fast, not gonna lie, but for current gen, you're gonna be able to uh, be a little bit more patient and then you'll be able to hit the uh, gap. So right there, as you can tell, I mean, we caught the pick and most of this stuff is gonna be just uh, zone coverage. I love zone, that's just me personally. I love to run a zone. But I also love the mix in man coverage. So that's why I do a lot of my videos from man blitzes, like all out man blitzes, because I have the option to create my own coverages. So you can technically run some of these blitzes um, with base coverages, but they just aren't effective that much, to be honest with you. So uh, right there is a good example of why this defense is uh, a really, really great defense to run is because we're going to be able to have a lot of coverage sacks. So with this defense, I want to tell you all something also. Just because you, just because I tell you in the setup to rush five people, doesn't mean that you rush five people every single play. You want to make sure you mix it up. You want to rush five, about maybe you know, about four plays or so. You know, maybe four, five, six plays. You want to rush five people. Then on that seventh play or whatever, go ahead and drop two, two more guys in the coverage and only rush three, if that makes sense. So drop that slot corner, drop that linebacker. Don't just rush five every single play. Now, if you're getting pressure and you're causing a lot of pressure, keep rushing them. But if you start to notice your opponent's trying to max pro, maybe only send out three people, um, then that's when you want to start mixing it up with the coverages, okay? And as you can tell, the way this defense is so good with the quarterback attains is the minute they try to roll out the pocket, you're going to get pressure. You're going to get a sack. So the thing about this defense is um, the random, what you're banking on is the random times where they're gonna, we're gonna get either a, a B gap blitz or maybe a C gap blitz. That's what we're banking on. We're banking on those things, okay? Because what's gonna happen is all we needed to come in is once. If we can scream at them once, which you definitely will with this defense, your opponent is gonna start worrying about the blitz. So we actually did match up against the same person again. And I don't know, I don't know about y'all, but that happens to me a whole lot where I match up against the same person, okay? Um, don't know why it is, but anyways, this time I'm um, more than positive he's in uh, Kansas City's playbook from these two formations, so he is going to be in this little trips, and this is actually one of my favorite defenses for trips. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll change it up and I'll take that linebacker that's manned up to the running back and I'll put him in a flats, and then what I'll do is I'll take um, that cornerback and I'll put him in a quarter that's to the single receiver side, so really love to do that, and I normally do a cover three shell on the back side. So right here, this is empty, so there's a ton of ways I like to uh, guard empty. You guys are gonna see a little bit more empty formation, so my suggestion is when you're watching this video, it's right there, I I don't know why that wasn't the pick, I swear I was holding track, I thought I timed it up right, but we just didn't time it up right, I guess, so. Um, one thing I wanna say is um, whenever it comes to actually calling your coverages you make sure you do that last so you want to set up the blitz first and then do your coverage so my suggestion is please go into practice mode on current gen and practice setting it up i know it's simple crash up spread linebackers press quarterback and team. the faster you can do that the faster you'll have time to play around so a lot of you guys will, if i and the reason i'm showing this much gameplay because a lot of you guys probably will tell me hey bro there's no way you got enough time i don't have enough time i don't have enough time if i only showed you in practice mode those adjustments so as you guys can tell, uh, you want to make sure you have time. Now, notice the set is uh, compressed. So what compressed sets uh, is right there we get a great uh, shed. So as for compressed sets, you want to make sure you base align, which if you want an ebook, please go on my website and request one. Um, if you want one specifically on this, I may end up putting one on here for current gen, but I'm not too positive yet. Um, it just depends on how many of you guys want it, because that's one thing I will go over in the ebook is like per formation, what are my favorite adjustments? Because I have certain coverages shells that I like depending on what formation they're in and depending on if they're under center or not. There's a lot of things that it varies on and it varies on what they're trying to attack. Are they the type of player who throw drag who throw drag routes a lot? Are they the type of player that likes to take shots down the field? Are they the type of player that likes to throw in routes? Are they the type of player who just runs the ball all day? You know, there's different type of players when you play Madden. The key to being great at Madden is to figure out what type of player your opponent is, okay? Because uh, I can give you this defense all day long. I can tell you this defense is so great all day long. I can show you this defense is great all along. But if you are not able to 
understand how to guard your opponent and understand what your opponent's trying to do, what their tendencies are, you won't ever be uh, good. So, not that you won't ever be good. No, I didn't mean to say that. You're going to struggle. You can still be good, but you're going to struggle a lot if you can't understand what type of player you're playing. So, based on my opponent's first pass, I knew he was going to be risky. So, that means that I can actually bait a lot easier because I knew he was going to be risky. Now, that wasn't his first pass, but uh, with this game, I accidentally... Um, <laughs> I didn't clip the first half of this game. I thought it was recording, but it wasn't. So I only caught like that last little drive, but he did do a great job. Uh, I wish I could have showed y'all that because he, it would have been a great example to show you why I say baseline in tight compressed formations because uh, how he scored 14 points was uh, he ran tight slots, but I didn't baseline basically. So my corners didn't tell, when I tried to put him in thirds, they was playing like seam flats or something. So I just kept getting bombed. I got bombed twice. That's how he scored 14. But anyway, the opponent uh, right now, he's running actually uh, Empty Hawk. And this Empty Hawk can be pretty tough to stop if you don't really understand what you want your players to do. Or you don't understand what Empty Hawk, what plays they like to run out of it. So the cover shells you see me running are um, basically I like to play kind of like a cover three or a cover four shell to one side. Uh, so on this left side over here with the two receivers, I got them locked up and then I'll play cover three on the back side, basically to the um, trip side. Because if you got empty, you got doubles on one side and you got trips on the other side. That's what makes it um, like that. So either I'll man lock that left side or I'll actually uh, cover four drop it on that left side or I'll actually like uh, just guard the, uh, have the man stay on the slot. So there's a lot of different things I like to do. So that's why I said an ebook would be great if you want one because I can go over what personally I like to do. Um, I play risky but effective. And this is only for blitzing. Keep in mind, I'm not talking about Max Pro. I'm talking about blitzing. All these things you see me doing is from a five-man blitz or from a four-man blitz. So when you're watching this, please make sure you pay attention to covered shells. My suggestion each time before the opponent snaps the ball, kind of pause and take a look at the coverage and then notice how they play. One thing I want to say is uh, that actually upset me. <laughs> he should not have caught that ball, but it is what it is. He made a good play. But um, one thing you have to keep in mind is that when you're running this defense, it's a give but don't break, basically, or a bend but don't break, however you like to say the expression. They're both mean the same thing. So there's going to be times where there's certain formations that your opponent's going to be able to move the ball on. So, uh, for example, any of the single back tights, the cover show you're looking at is one of my favorites. Now, every now and again, I'll take that uh, blitz and linebacker if they're giving me problems, and I'll actually put them in the flats. Or I'll take the guy man up to the running back, and I'll actually put him in the uh, spy. And then I'll actually move my user to go cover the left side. You see, I went over there to the left, but I came back. And that's why I put the cloud on that side. So there's logic behind everything I'm doing. And because I understand what I need to do for my job as a user. So right there, um, I know he didn't mean to, but I love, love, love mixing up coverages. And for you to be uh, successful with this defense, I feel like it's important for you to keep giving your opponent different looks. Okay. Um, we, we don't want them to know what we're doing, but you also want to make sure you understand what you're doing more importantly. So right here, notice how... Um, Every now and again, if you're flipping, if you're doing a lot of advanced setups, every now and again, this type of stuff will happen where your opponent may flip the formation and may mess up things. So uh, a good rule of thumb is if something looks weird, call a timeout. Or if you don't have any and you just messing up your adjustments like that right there, that was actually my fault. That was a misadjustment. Um, I shouldn't have had that uh, deep half play right there where he was. So every now and again with this defense, if you're going to be risky, which this is pretty much a risky style defense, we're gonna be able to give up things. So right there is, an, is a good example of, there are some formations that this defense will struggle against. It's just it's just nature. You have to understand different adjustments you can do. Um, now, for example, if he wanted to keep spamming this little run play, there's a couple things I can do, because notice he, is, he does have lanes. So one thing I could do is probably pinch my line, you know, or I could not spread my linebackers. Please don't be ignorant, okay? Um, just try not to be ignorant. But right here is a good example of why you want to quarterback attain. That quarterback attain is necessary. So uh, my opponent does have a third down now. A couple things I like to do is I like to uh, actually mix it up on that backside. But I didn't that play, but uh, they tried to run the ball. And like I said, we're going to have people running to the football, all right? Now, notice the press formation. So actually, this is baseline, right? So that's what I was trying to explain to you guys is that you want to make sure that your baseline, if they're coming out in those super tight compressed formations because... Um, you're not going to be able to put those cornerbacks on what you want. So notice how when I move them inside, I actually can't put them where I can, where I want to. So I have to keep baseline. So I had to call a timeout. A perfect example of 
using your timeouts effectively, okay? Um, and that was a perfect example of what I was trying to tell you guys about is that sometimes those adjustments aren't made correctly because of where your cornerback's lined up at. So please make sure you are paying attention to where your cornerback's lined up. So right here uh, is a good example of how you should do. You should base a line after the fact and then do your coverages, okay? So that way you don't have to burn timeouts all game. Now, right here he is gonna motion to empty. Now this is how I like guard empty. I love putting that linebacker in a flat man up that slot. And now we're just gonna be free roaming around the middle. So as you can tell, we kind of just bracket everything off. So it is third and six. Um, there's Now sometimes I do like to man up that uh, solo side or the double side, but right there he's gonna just chunk it up. I have no idea why he chunks that ball up. I guess he would just, don't know. <laughs> no idea. but. Right here, he's going to come back out into Gun at the Hawk. And there's so many different ways to guard this formation. Um, so many ways you could be risky. So right here is another risky style of defense where uh, if he wanted to put that tight end on the street, we would have had it. I mean, he would have had it. But I was uh, actually spying over the tight end and I seen him. Followed it. Basically, good lurk by us, you know. So right here, uh, he is going to come back out to Empty Hawk. And what you notice is that every time he's coming out in this formation, I'm doing a different coverage adjustment. So that way, he can't figure out what he needs to run to pick my defense apart. That makes sense. So we're going to change up what's open every play. Now, right here, I accidentally left the tight end open by accident. So uh, every now and then, you got to be able to pay attention to who's open because if we're playing all-out man blitz and you're putting zones, there's going to be some um, some areas where we just don't uh, have people where we need them, if that makes sense. So right there, um, you guys can tell this just... I ain't got nothing to say, man. You know, it's just, it's just, you know, this defense is just a really good, solid defense. Now, right here is a great, great dot by my opponent. Um, That technically is the weak area of that particular coverage, but he's going to come out in the same formation. Now, if you get dotted up, it is important for you to understand. Change your coverage. Pay attention to what, know what guards what. Notice right there, he tried to actually do the same play again, but this time we had a man actually right there. So I didn't like how close it was, so I decided to kind of change it up again. And you want to make sure you change up coverages to see what works. Because when you start playing opponents, a lot of times they become ignorant. And when I say ignorant, I just mean they try to do the same thing over and over again, no matter what. Even if you guard it, even if you're on it last play, they'll still try it again. So against those ignorant players, you always want to make sure that you um, are trying not to be ignorant. Now, right here, I had man on the right side, but I didn't have the tight end guarded. So I wanted to make sure I went ahead and manned that up. So I got the right side completely manned up, had zone on the left side. And normally, if I'm going to play man and zone combos, I like to man up one side and then zone the other side most of the time, okay? And it's important. These coverage shows that you guys see me running uh, time in and time out, they are going to be effective. Also, because why? We're sending the blitz at them at the same time. Now, right there, he had all day to throw, but because we did such a great job, he didn't have anybody open, if that makes sense. So, right here, uh, we did end up scoring again. And uh, I decided not to put nobody in the middle. Actually, I just switched it over. Put them free safety in the middle, and we're going to be able to guard that ourselves. And you guys can tell, the reason you play cover three on the outside as a shell is so that way we can bracket everything. So that way we don't have to worry about getting beat on the sidelines. And then we're going to basically funnel everything into the middle. And right there, uh, you always want to be alert for the screens if you're a middle linebacker. You know, just general, general things is going to be able to help you out. So right here, no clue why he throws that. Literally no clue. But... If it's 38 to 7, he's just trying to make something happen. Doesn't make something happen, so he's going to be able to make an early exit. So we are going to go ahead and load up into the next game, and we are matched up against the 49ers. And like I said, when I played these games, y'all, I don't know how else to explain it. Just one game after another, after another, after another. I actually was only going to do two, but right there, we actually did fumble, unfortunately. Um, and then that's how he ended up with the ball. So I wanted you guys to see um, if there's ever any important things I love for you guys to see. So right here... I actually love playing this style of coverage where we actually cloud uh, our cornerback and then play man with everybody else. I only like to do that when it's closer to the red zone, and I like to do it for compressed formations. Um, so that's why you'll see me play a lot of little man with a, um, one of my cornerbacks, either in a hard flat or a cloud. Um, it's right here. You're going to be able to see another example. So what I'm going to do is I'm a cloud. I'm a hard flat that one, and I took the linebacker, put him on the receiver. Um, this way, we can be good no matter what they run. We can take away the gaps. And right there, you can tell we have players where we need them to be, and uh, we made a great play. So right here, my opponents decided to fake a field goal for whatever reason. I have no clue why he did that or why he chose that one. Maybe he meant to choose the other one because uh, most of y'all know that field goal one, the one he did, isn't that good. The passing one is the best one to do. So um, he did, I actually did throw a pick, and so he did get the ball back. So <laughs> that's why I scored 0-0 still. 
Also, uh, for those of you guys that made it this far, I really appreciate y'all, man. Um, I want to talk to y'all for a sec. I truly appreciate you. Like, you watching this, like, I, if you're watching it this far, that, it really does mean a lot to me. And that lets me know that you actually for real support me. And I have, I know he had to be hot about that one. I'm pretty sure he didn't mean to. Um, I would have been hot about that. But, for real, I truly, truly appreciate y'all. Um, y'all have no idea how much I appreciate y'all. Um, it's, it's an honor, honestly, to have y'all watch this. It's a blessing. Um, and I don't take y'all for granted. I appreciate all y'all. Um, so that's why I love y'all coming. I love being able to talk to you guys. Um, I just love it. Now, right there, I ain't gonna lie. If he would have scored, <laughs> that's what I was thinking when he was doing all that. I thought he was about to break out of there. But anyways, uh, second to 12, um, it's really no more for me to talk about this defense other than just letting y'all just kind of see how it works. It's right there. Um, it's going to be a lot of those if you play this defense. Like there, There's going to be a lot of things that's out of your control, and you know you can't really do nothing about it. So right here, uh, that was actually my fault. That was one of the things I was telling you about compressed formation. So did you notice on the right side how that receiver had him beat? That's because my cornerback didn't actually go into the zone I was telling him to go into. Because if he's too close, if he's inside the numbers or on the numbers, they'll make him have like uh, different adjustments to where you can't get outside coverages. If that makes sense. They'll treat him almost like a slot cornerback instead of a, a outside cornerback. So, right there, he tried to run the classic play. People run out of, uh, I think that was bunch wide flex with a little dagger play. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> it's a good play, but it's just not that good on current gen. Well, I ain't gonna say that. It's a good play. I just had good coverage that time. Uh, but, anyways, we are back on defense. The most important part, I want y'all to, like I said, Please pay attention to the formations and pay attention to how I'm covering them, right? As right there, I could have sworn that was a pick. <laughs> I think if it was like, what, Madden, uh, they probably would have gave you that on Madden, uh, maybe 20. They probably would have gave that to you as far as a pick, but I hate when they let you, when they let them do that, you know? Well, not hate. I try not to say hate. Hate is a strong word, y'all. But anyways, we got first and 10 right here, and uh, it's one of the rare times. Every now and again, I like to just play all out man coverage just to kind of have fun. Me, personally, I don't know why, y'all. I feel like it's just cheesing if you just run man coverage. I like to give myself a challenge. That's really what it is, if you want me to be real. Um, I, want, I run a ton of zone for that reason, just because I like to give myself a challenge. I like to be able to not let my opponent know what I'm doing, and also, like, just I'm more of a zone player because, uh, man, it's it comes down to just will EA give it to you or not a lot of times with man. And I just I don't like playing that way. I like being able to take physically take away what you want to throw. So, anyways, this is one of my other favorite um, trip style, not trip, excuse me, empty style coverages where we're going to basically zone up that left side, but I'm pretty sure he's just picking uh, coach adjustment because I've never seen nobody run a quarterback draw, to be real. <laughs> They're good, but you just don't ever see nobody running them. But uh, right there, he is going to just uh, throw in a flat. So, right now, to me, he's the type of player already who will throw his flat routes every time to CMC. So, you just have to learn how to adjust to your opponent. So now I need to be keeping in mind of what, what CMC is doing, if he's going in the flats or not. And then uh, either I'll put somebody there or I'll go take it away myself, you know. So uh, now I see Debo in the backfield. And I know he likes to throw his flat. So he, he, I can't talk. He's not on the flat. He throws that. We get a pick. So as you guys can see, the defense just, I mean, it speaks for itself, man. I think I got a couple more plays here. And then um, that'll be wrapping it up for this video, man. Like I said, man, I truly appreciate you guys. And let me know how you're liking this defense for current gen. Let me know, you know, what video you guys want to see. I'm also going to drop you the offense that I did on this in these videos as well. So it'll be a similar format. I don't know if I'm going to do it in my next video or if I'm going to wait and do it the video after. But you guys are going to see the offense I used on current gen. Also, because this offense is crazy. I ain't going to lie to you guys. Um, you guys, I want if you guys go back and kind of look at the scores, you guys will see we put up points in every single game. We put up points. I think we put up at least 20 in all four games, um, minimum, I believe. So just uh, make sure you go check it out. And right here, I'm, I'm saying that I got 14. <laughs> I think I score here, though, again, though. Yeah, you see, I got 21. So like I said, I'm pretty sure I put up 20 in every single uh, all four of these games. Um, and it's really good offense. And like I said, even better defense as we get a great great lurk to go ahead and end the video with so anyways that's gonna wrap it up for this video though i believe um nope i got one more okay cool i forget how many i had so right there we do end up getting <laughs> another pick um now nah, that one's a little lucky but we'll take it but anyways i think that's gonna wrap it up so i do pray that you have a blessed day um so i let y'all see the when he quits out <sighs> why not i'm ray drill and i'm out